the topic is astronomical instruments. The subtopics are astronomical observatory, Chandra X-ray observatory, X-ray telescope, coronagraph, Debris in space and light pollution in earth. Here comes our astronomical observatory in the script. Let's enjoy it. Good morning everyone. I am here to tell you about astronomical instruments. Astronomical instruments are the tools used to observe objects and phenomena that occurs in space. The mention of the telescope was like many others, an accident. Aspect 
camera. The aspect camera system includes a 11.2 cm f9 which is written visible light telescope and CCD camera attached to the X-ray telescope. CCD is placed out of focus to spread the star image over several pixels to increase the accuracy of centering algorithm. A sun shade protects the camera from the light from the sun, earth and moon with awareness angles of 45 degree, 20 degree and 6 degree respectively. Point spread function. The telescope's point spread function as measured during ground calibration had a full width of maximum less than 0.5 arc second and a off power diameter less than 1 arc second. A relatively mild dependence on energy resulting from diffractive scattering by surface micro roughness attached to the three agro stones surface roughness. The ground measurements were taken under environment condition quite different than those encountered on orbit. Instrumentation. The instrument module includes mechanism for focusing and translating the imaging detectors into position at the focus of the telescope. Positioning of the instrument is required as X-ray beam splitters are not very efficient. Positioning of the instruments is required as X-ray beam splitters are not very efficient. Discoveries. The first X-ray focused by the telescope were observed on August 12, 1999. The bright inner elliptical ring showing the first direct observation of the shock front where the wind of particles from the pulsar begins to radiate in X-ray via in synchrotron process. Our topic is X-ray telescope. Our group members are Harshadev, Ashra Ahmed, Vishakar, and Bharati. What is the X-ray telescope? An X-ray telescope, XRT, is a telescope that is designed to observe remote objects in X-ray spectrum. In order to get about the Earth's atmosphere, which is opaque to X-ray, X-ray telescope must be mounted on high altitude, rockets, balloon or artificial satellites. X-ray telescope and how? Chandra was the one to create the X-ray telescope. X-ray telescope need to have mirrors that are made of material that will reflect an X-ray photon and need to be oriented such that the X-ray hit the mirror at the grassy incident to achieve this. An X-ray telescope has to be oriented such that the mirror surface are nearly parallel to the incoming light. What does an X-ray telescope detect? X-ray emission from very hot regions of the universe such as exploded stars, clusters of galaxies and matter around black holes. X-ray telescope works. An optical telescope uses a large curved glass primary mirror to gather light. But X-ray should penetrate such a reflective coating. An X-ray telescope mirror must be facing almost perpendicular to path of the incoming light so that the photons grace the surface like stones skipping across a pond. Why do X-ray telescopes use grazing mirrors? The angles that can bounce an X-ray of a mirror like that are called and quarter grazing incidents and for X-ray telescope need to have mirrors 
that are made of material that will reflect an X-ray photon and need to be oriented such that the X-ray hits the mirror at the grazing incidence. These are the days of space telescope. Space telescopes are much more expensive to build the ground-based telescope. Due to their location, space telescopes are also extremely difficult to maintain. The humble space telescope was serviced by the space shuttle, but most space telescopes cannot be serviced at all. X-ray telescope model. The model is done by a group. It is just similar to the uh, picture which we are seeing now. It has all the parts in the picture and all the colors in the picture. Thank you friends, teacher and parents for spending your valuable time with us. Thank you. Hi everyone. This is our group project. Coronagram Group Members Pragadesh Akshaya Sanjeevi Do you know what is Coronagram? Yes! Corona, the outermost region of the sun's atmosphere, consisting of plasma, which means hot ionized gas. It has a temperature of approximately 2 million Kelvin and extremely low density. The corona continually varies in size, shape, and it is affected by the sun's magnetic field. The solar wind, which flows the radially outward through the entire solar system, is formed by an expansion of the coronal graphs only yet at the heliopause. Do we know corona graph is a study? Yes, the corona shines only about half as brightly as the moon and is normally not visible to the unaided eyes because its its light is overwhelmed by the brilliance of the solar surface during a total solar eclipse however however the moon blocks out light from the photosphere permitting naked eye observations of the corona the corona can also be studied under non eclipse conditions with a special telescope instrument called a coronagraph. Do you know who invented coronagraph? The coronagraph was introduced in 1931 by the French astronomer Bernard Lyot. Since then, coronagraphs has been used at many solar observatories. The coronagraphs operating within Earth atmosphere suffer from scattered light in the sky itself due primarily to reveling scattering of sunlight in the upper atmosphere. At few angles close to the sun, the sky is much brighter than the background. Corona, even at high altitude, sights on clear, dry days. Ground, ground based coronagraphs such as the high altitude observatories mark IV coronagraph on top of Mauna Loa use polarization to distinguish sky brightness from the image of the corona. Both coronal light and sky brightness are scattered sunlight and have similar spectral properties. But the coronal light is the Thomson scattered at nearly a right angle and therefore undergoes scattering polarization, while the supremus light from the sky near the sun is scattered at only a glancing angle and hence remains nearly unpolarized. Types of coronagraph Band limited coronagraph Face mask coronagraph Optical vortex coronagraph Band limited coronagraph A band limited coronagraph uses a special kind of mask called a band limited mask. This mask is designed to block light and also manage diffraction effects caused by removal of the light. The band limited coronagraph has served as the baseline design for the cancelled terrestrial planet finder coronagraph. Band limited mass will also available on the James Webb Space Telescope. 
face mask coronagraph a face mask coronagraph such as the so called fourth quadrant face mask coronagraph uses a transparent mask to sift the face of the stellar light in order to create a self destructive inference rather than a simple opaque disk to block it optical vortex coronagraph an optical vortex coronagraph uses a face mask in which the face shift varies asymmetrically around the center several varieties of optical vortex coronagraph exist thank you everyone for cooperating we have came to the end of our project thank you space debris by anushka sahana purna and hanush In this presentation we will be seeing about introduction about space debris types of orbits sources of debris tracking and measurement of debris clearance of space debris introduction to space debris let's look a small conversation between lalita and abilesh to understand more about space debris What are space debris? Space debris, also known as orbital debris, space junk, and space waste, is a collection of different objects in orbit around the Earth. This includes everything from spent rocket stages, old satellites, fragments from distant integration, and erosion and collision. Why are they a threat? Debris poses a growing threat to satellites and could prevent the use of valuable orbits in the future. Many pieces are too small to monitor but too large to shield satellites against. Types of orbit chart and explanation by S Sahana. Good day everyone. Today uh Sahana from class 7A I am going to explain about the types of orbits First uh, there are four types of orbits low earth orbit that is LEO medium earth orbit MEO geostationary earth orbit GEO and high earth orbit HEO Let's see about all of these individually The LEO it is situated at an altitude between 160 and 2000 km from the earth surface and it has a time period of about 127 minutes and it's the most uh, simplest uh, orbit and uh, it's the most cost effective for satellite base next the eo that is medium earth orbit it is situated from 2000 to 36000 km above the earth surface it has an orbital period of about 12 hours and uh, the uh, the most common use uh, of satellites in this place is for navigation communication and uh, space environmental science next is the geo geostationary earth orbit uh, it is a circular orbit at uh, 35786 km above the earth surface and it has an orbital period equal to the earth's rotational period and uh, uh, this orbital period uh, makes them very useful for uh, communications because the receiver is on uh, is on earth in a point in the same direction uh, all the time then the heo that is high earth orbit it is situated uh, above 36000 km and the orbital periods of such high orbits uh, such orbits are uh, greater than 24 hours they are very little used by satellites now let's see about the debris in each of them first debris in leo that is low earth orbit satellites in leo many different uh, orbits Uh, orbital planes providing global coverage and the 15 orbits per day typical of LEO satellites result in frequent approaches between the pairs. After space debris is created, the orbital plane's direction will change over time and thus collisions can occur from virtually any direction. This leads to 
low cascading effect. There be at higher altitudes. Uh, at higher altitudes where uh, the atmospheric drag is less significant, orbital decay takes much longer. And uh, this issue is uh, especially problematic in the variable GEO orbits uh, where satellites are uh, often uh, clustered to share the same orbital parts. Uh, and it has been estimated that uh, at least uh, one close approach with 50, uh, within 50 meters takes place every year. Sources of Debris Models by Hanush Tracking and measurement of debris Tracking of debris Radar and the optical detectors such as a leader are the main tools used for tracking space debris. Radio waves has been recently used. These waves are transmitted into the space and they bounce off space junk back to the origin that will be detect and track the object. Ground based radar facilities and the space telescopes are also used to track the debris. Measurement of debris. Written hardware of space debris is valuable source of information of the environment. Close examination of its surface allows us and the analysis of the directional distribution and the composition of the debris flux. Some of the models used to vary. LDEF long duration exposure facility satellite. EURECA European Retrievable Carrier STS 61 Indivera STS 109 Columbia Clearance of Space Debris Some methods used are Tug like satellites, electrodynamic taters, laser brooms, solar sails, and space nets. Now let's look more about the tug like satellites. The tug like satellites drag the debris to a safe altitude in order for it to burn up in the atmosphere. It creates an electron emission to create difference in potential between the debris as negative and itself as positive. The satellite then uses its own thrusters to propel itself along with the debris to a safer orbit. The picture shows the tug tetra debris system. Now let's look about electrodynamic taters. An electrodynamic tater provides a simple and reliable alternative to the conventional rocket thrusters. It works on the basic principle of Lorentz force and Fleming's left hand roll. Magnetic force is exerted on a ca current carrying wire in a direction perpendicular to the both the flow of current and the magnetic field. The picture shows the electrodynamic tater. Now let's look in deep about laser brooms. The laser broom uses a powerful ground based laser to ablate the front surface of, of debris and thereby produce a rocket like thrust that slows the object. With continued application, the debris will eventually decrease the altitude enough to become subject to atmospheric drag. Additionally, the momentum of photons in the laser beam could be used to impart thrust on their debris directly. The current technology used is the hydrogen fluoride chemical energy powered lasers. Although this thrust would be tiny, it may be enough to move small debris into new orbits that do not intersect 
dose of working satellites. Let's learn more about solar sails now. The solar sails uses the pressure from sunlight to navigate an object just like a naval sail uses wind. This way debris can be navigated out of the orbit and burn into the atmosphere. The only problem with the solar sails is that it's very hard to navigate the junk into the ocean and hence may be pretty dangerous. Now let's see about space nets. Space nets or umbrellas are satellites which eject a huge net that fishes or collects the debris and is later disposed off into a graveyard orbit. We hope you liked the presentation. Thank you for your patient listening. Hi everyone, I am Navardhan and my friend Raghu Kavin is here to explain on the topic light pollution on earth. So, Raghu Kavin will explain what is light pollution. Light pollution is excessive misdirected or inappropriate outdoor lighting. Too much light pollution washes out the view of the universe, increasing energy consumption, interferes with astronomical research, disrupts ecosystem, and affects the health and safety of humans and our wildlife. It may surprise you to know that light pollution can have as great an impact on the planet as well as, as levels of carbon monoxide and other airborne pollutants. Causes of light pollution. Light pollution is unique as it is caused by humans only. There is no comparable nature form of pollution like other is with carbon dioxide. The main causes of light pollution are poor planting, irresponsible use, over pollution, excess of excess use of light, smog and clouds. Lights from car and other motorcycle vehicles, street lamp, light from houses and garage lamps, nighttime lighting, downtown areas. These are the causes of light pollution. Solutions to light pollution. There are two basic approaches to solving light pollution, planning and education. Planning means more consideration of how areas are zoned and where light or lights are placed. It also means changing the types of lights used within the home. Signs and street lamps to more efficient bulbs and with a light output that is not so destructive. The, the effective measures are light shields, warm lighting, use certified lighting, motion sensors, cut off light, turn off the lights. Pollution also affects the ecosystem. Sockeye salmon. Sockeye salmon is a fish. Sockeye salmon stops swimming downstream when exposed to any light above 0.1 lex and often end up in low velocity water near shore which brings them into close contact with predators. Bats. Bats are predisposed to avoid lights and so have less time to hunt at night due to artificial lights. Baby turtles. Baby turtles often get lost after hatching due to artificial light. Solutions to light pollution. There are two basic approaches to solving light pollution. Planning and education. Planning means more consideration of how areas are zoned and where light or lights are placed. 
It also means changing the types of lights used within the home. Signs and street lamps to more efficient bulbs and with the light output that is not so destructive. The, the effective measures are light shields, warm lighting, use certified lighting, motion sensors, cut off light, turn off the lights. Light pollution can affect human health such as breast cancer and circadian rhymes. Thank you. Three. Hello everyone. This is Kevin Anderson, myself and my group members. Anushka G and Vishagan are here to tell about infrared space observatory. The subtopics of the topic infrared space observatory are what is infrared space observatory history and development the examples of infrared space observatory structure of infrared space observatory advantages and disadvantages of it and uses of infrared space observatory what is infrared space observatory the infrared space observatory is known as ISO, Water Space Telescope for Infrared Light Designed and Operated by the European Space Agency. European Space Agency is known as ESA. In cooperation with ISAS, now part of JAXA and NASA, the ISO was designed to study infrared light at wavelengths of 2.5 to 240 micrometers to and operated from 1995 to 1998. The 480.1 million euro satellites was launched on 17th September 1995 from, from the LR2 launch pad at the Guyana Space Center near Kaurau in French Guyana. The launch vehicle and Ariane 44P rocket placed ISO successfully into a highly elliptical geocentric orbit completing one revolution around the Earth every 24 hours. Currently, ESA and IPAC continues efforts to improve the data, pine lines, and specialized software analysis tools to yield the best quality calibration and data reduction methods from the mission. The US Dutch British IRAS inaugurated space based infrared astronomy by, astronomy by performing the first ever all sky scurvy at infrared wavelengths. The resulting map of the infrared sky pinpointed some 350,000 infrared sources waiting to be explored by IRAS successors. In 1979, IRAS was in an advanced stage of planning and the expected result from IRAS led to the, fir led to the first proposal for ISO made to the ESC in the same year. With the rapid improvements in infrared detector technology, ISO was to provide detailed observation for some 30,000 infrared sources with much improved sensitivity and resolution. ISO was to perform 1000 times better in the sensitivity and 100 times better in the angular resolution at 12 micrometers compared to IRAS. Structure of Infrared Space Telescope Infrared Space Telescope contains a sun shield with solar cells and a service module for electrical power, attitude control and telecommunication. It also contains an interface with Ariane. 
the uh, infrared space telescope i have a ir path and a play load mold which is called as the cryostat and a start crackers it also contains a super fluid helium tank where the helium is stored the te uh, this telescope also contains some scientific instruments plus a star sensor uses of infrared space observatories infrared space observatories can detect object too cool and too faint to be observed in visible light such as planets some nebulas and brown dwarf stars also infrared radiation has longer wavelength than visible light which means it can pass through astronomical gas and dust without being scattered infrared telescopes instruments designed to detect and resolve infrared radiation from sources outside earth's atmosphere such as nebulas young stars and gas and dust in other galaxies This picture depicts the difference shown between the visible light and the infrared light. Now let us see the advantages of infrared space observatory. Infrared telescopes detect light that has a longer wavelength than the human eye can see. The main advantage of this is that we can use it to see stuff that we otherwise couldn't be able to one of the advantages of observing in the near infrared is that a dust is transparent to it this is why an optical telescope would be unable to see a star and shroud it in dust whereas one working in near infrared would be able to detect its emission now let's see its disadvantages One such disadvantage is included the placement and infrared telescopes must be placed in a tall and dry mountain to avoid the radiation coming in the space coming from space to be observed by water vapor and to avoid picking up earth bound energy placement is an issue but the telescope themselves is an issue the telescope must be cool themselves otherwise they will pick up themselves keeping cool is an ex expensive process thank you all hope you all enjoyed the ppt and know more information about infrared space observatory about humble space telescope humble space telescope was launched in 1990 and still remains in operation It is the most largest and versatile space telescope. Size of Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble is forty-three point five feet long and fourteen feet wide. It weighs twenty-seven thousand pounds. Inventor of Hubble Space Telescope, Edwin Hubble, made the Hubble Space Telescope. He used this Hubble Space Telescope at 1920s at Mid Wilson Observatory near Pasadena, California, to discover galaxies beyond our own. Launched on. It was launched on April 24, 1990. This is a picture of Hubble Space Telescope. Thank you. This is Lalita Arni signing off. Space Debris by Anushka, Sahana, Purna and Hanush. In this presentation we will be seeing about introduction about space debris types of orbits sources of debris tracking and measurement of debris clearance of space debris
Introduction to Space Debris. Let's look a small conversation between Lalita and Abilish to understand more about space debris. What are space debris? Space debris, also known as orbital debris, space junk and space waste, is a collection of different objects in orbit around the Earth. This includes everything from spent rocket stages, oil satellites, fragments from disintegration, and erosion and collision. Why are they a threat? Debris poses a growing threat to satellites and could prevent the use of valuable orbits in the future. Many pieces are too small to monitor but too large to shield satellites against. Types of Orbit Chart and Explanation by S. Sahana Sources of debris, models by Hanush. Tracking and measurement of debris. Tracking of debris, radar and the optical detectors such as a leader are the main tools used for tracking space debris. Radium base has been recently used 
these waves are transmitted into the space and they bounce off space junk back to the origin that will be detected and track the object ground based radar facilities and the space telescopes are also used to track the debris measurement of debris written hardware of space debris is valuable source of information of the environment close examination of its surface allows us and the analysis of the directional distribution and the composition of the debris flux some of the models used to var ldef long duration exposure facility satellite EURECA -E European Retrievable Carrier STS 61 Indivera STS 109 Columbia Clearance of Space Debris Some methods used are Tug like satellites, electrodynamic craters, laser brooms, solar sails, and space nets. Now let's look more about the tug like satellites. The tug like satellites drag the debris to a safe altitude in order for it to burn up in the atmosphere. It creates an electron emission to create difference in potential between the debris as negative and itself as positive. The satellite then uses its own thrusters to propel itself along with the debris to a safer orbit. The picture shows the tug data debris system. Now let's look about electrodynamic craters. An electrodynamic crater provides a simple and reliable alternative to the conventional rocket thrusters. It works on the basic principle of Lorentz force and Fleming's left hand roll. Magnetic force is exerted on a car current carrying wire in a direction perpendicular to the both the flow of current and the magnetic field. The picture shows the electrodynamic crater. Now let's look in deep about laser brooms. The laser broom uses a powerful ground based laser to ablate the front surface of, of debris and thereby produce a rocket like thrust that slows the object. With continued application, the debris will eventually decrease the altitude enough to become subject to atmospheric drag. Additionally, the momentum of photons in the laser beam could be used to impart thrust on their debris directly. The current technology used is the hydrogen fluoride chemical energy powered lasers. Although this thrust would be tiny, it may be enough to move small debris into new orbits that do not intersect those of working satellites. Let's learn more about solar sails now. The solar sails uses the pressure from sunlight to navigate an object just like a naval sail uses wind. This way debris can be navigated out of the orbit and burn into the atmosphere. The only problem with the solar sails is that it's very hard to navigate the junk into the ocean and hence might be pretty dangerous. Now let's see about space nets. Space nets or umbrellas are satellites which eject a huge net that fishes or collects the debris and is later disposed off into a graveyard orbit. We hope you liked the presentation. Thank you for your patient listening.